goal of this podcast is to help you break in and thrive in advertising. And this week, we feature Will Hare, president and co-founder of Bellavix. They're an e-commerce agency, one of the first we've had on this podcast. Bellavix is a marketplace management agency helping retail brands systematically multiply sales and achieve category domination to grow sales on Amazon and Walmart. So Will's story starts in the Navy, and he shares how he transferred and progressed through the digital marketing field to grow into one of the most trusted digital marketers in the country. It's a rigorous part of marketing that can directly track ROI and take strategy and correct execution. But this type of advertising makes a huge difference for companies. While I'm certainly not the expert in e-commerce advertising and PPC, Will is. And Will is willing to answer any additional questions you might have after this episode. So to connect with Will and see his recommended resources, you can head over to our Instagram at Breaking and Entering Pod. Now on with the show. This is the Breaking and Entering Advertising Podcast. And as usual, I'm your accomplice, Gino Schellenberger. Kick it, Mikey. All right. Will Hare, welcome to the Breaking and Entering Advertising Podcast. How are you doing today? Thanks so much for coming on. I'm doing good. And I feel a little mischievous being part of this podcast. Breaking and entering sounds dangerous. I love when people bring that up. Not a lot of people bring that up. I for, I even forget about like the, the the name and like the accomplice and we're trying to help people break in. So thanks for bringing up the branding portion. I, 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 I forget about that. So I appreciate it. It's a very cool element. I'll say that. And I'm excited to be a part of here and tell your uh, your audience how they can break into advertising and marketing the legal way. Good, good. The legal way is preferred. You know, we have to break the law. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's talk about you. Uh, who are you? What do you do for a living? What's your what's the situation? Where do you live? Because I know right now from your LinkedIn, you're the CEO and co-founder of Bellavix. Yeah. Yep. So I'm the yeah co-founder of Bellavix. Bellavix is a marketplace uh, management and marketing company, Uh, and I personally have been in the uh, e-commerce world for a little over ten years in the advertising space. Um, So you know, kind of the backstory, but Bellavix is kind of a uh, a long journey of working at agencies and experiencing uh, client work uh, into the point where we you know, we decided to go on and kind of do it ourselves. So, um, so with that being said, uh, Bellavix as an agency, we help brands scale uh, on the platform and a big part of helping these brands scale is the marketing and advertising portion of, mm-hmm. of what we do. So e-commerce, you're, you're helping brands on platforms. You say that and that you mean, uh, does that mean Amazon, eBay, Google shopping, Walmart, like, Very cool. I'm glad you bring that up. But I always forget, like when I say marketplaces, I think Amazon, mm-hmm. Walmart, and I forget mm-hmm. that, you know, even your website technically through Shopify is a marketplace. So mm-hmm. uh, when I refer to marketplaces, uh, I primarily refer to Amazon and Walmart. And those are the primary marketplaces that we operate. on. OK, so you're one of to set the context here. You're one of the first uh, e-commerce uh, specialists on this podcast. Usually we have creative agencies that are talking about copywriting and uh graphic design and, and uh, art direction so we're gonna need some we're gonna need some real help here understanding what you do what does what does this all mean so give us a lesson now base level because a lot of our listeners might not have ever heard of this before um the, our listeners are you know uh it could be as freshmen in college to recent grads of college to entry-level people trying to find their first job uh, so give us give us the the basics, the basic education of what this means and, and give me the rundown, too. Excellent. Yeah. So if you have a brand or some products, obviously, and you're looking to sell them, you know, primarily your website's a great place to get started. But mm-hmm. uh, fair to think about is that Amazon, for example, represents 50 percent of e-commerce shopping in the wow. United States. And that's that's a huge portion of it. So it's definitely hard to ignore. If you're a new brand, for example, it's a great way to tap into an audience to test maybe your MVP, your minimal viable product, Mm -hmm. uh, as well as to kind of just get your brand out there. 
Uh, it definitely works best in culmination with uh, like an offline online strategy. When I speak offline, I mean off of Amazon or Walmart and on Amazon and Walmart. So forgive mm -hmm. me if my language gets confusing. For sure. Um, Thanks for clarifying. Yep. And the goal obviously is to sell more products. Usually when brands come to us, it's, uh, you know, there's some type of sales goal. There's definitely some infrastructural issues. So when you're getting started on Amazon, you have a brand, you have some products, you're looking to sell it. You know, the first thing you need to look into is compliance on the platform, understanding um, if it's ingestible or topical, for example, or if you're selling dangerous goods, like what's the shipping? How does it work? Mm -hmm. uh, how does customers from an SEO and advertising perspective, how do customers search for your products? How are products generally discovered? And then how do you get your product in front of those customers? Um, and to give you some more context, so like what's great about Amazon, like I mentioned, 50% of US e commerce. Uh, happens on Amazon, and that is uh, Amazon Prime members are roughly 200 million uh, U.S. Uh, persons are subscribed to Prime. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a Prime member. Me I officially don't even shop on websites, really, because Amazon has a great return policy. I'm generally able to read reviews. Yep. And if you're a millennial like myself, generally, I don't like to wait more than two days for anything to show up at my house. So, oh, Gen Z, too. For sure. Yeah, so you get it. So it's it's just the it's the way that marketplaces are moving. It's the way websites are moving. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a pretty exciting. So like I said, part of that is listing it properly. Then the other portion is how do you market and promote it? That's mm -hmm. something else we do as an agency. So you're gonna say, what's the promotion strategy? How are we gonna get eyeballs? Similar to if you're gonna do a website, you're selling a service if it's something local. How do I get my product in front of people's and you know, we can go into the details of that, but that's a big portion of it. And then the advertising. Generally, Amazon specifically is a pay-to-play platform. Okay. It's, you know, certain categories are saturated. If you're yep. selling the beauty products, specifically an anti-aging cream, welcome to club everyone. And you're yeah. going to have to get really creative on how you compete. Um, and those are some examples of, you know, how how it would work if you were selling products uh, through marketplaces. So is it is it fairly different? than the this, this structure for like Google ads and PPC on Google or, or is it a completely different ball game? Because I've noticed there's like Amazon top picks, bestseller, like things that show up towards the top. And I usually click those first on yeah. Amazon. So yeah. is it similar? Fundamentally, it's the same like pay per click. It, it's, it's keyword, it's user intent based. So if somebody's searching for something, they're obviously in market, your ads can populate. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some nuances. So for example, on Amazon and Walmart, advertising sales count towards uh, organic ranking. So mm -hmm. sales attribution on the platform is how Amazon uh, determines who's going to show up first. Their, uh, their mission is to be the world's uh, greatest e-commerce platform, essentially, sure. uh, the most customer-centric e-commerce platform. And what that means is that they're populating the products that are most likely to lead to a sale. Okay. Um, so part, you got to keep that in mind as you're so Wait, how do they determine that? Uh, through their algorithm, through actually what sells when people search. So, okay. you know, it gets complicated, but essentially through the algorithm, you can you, know, you have your paid ad placements, your organic mm -hmm. ranking. And then in there, it comes down to the maturity of the listing. Uh, the reviews, the quality of the listing, the conversion okay. rate. So there's a lot of like backend data that goes into it. Uh, but at the end of the day, they're always measuring, you know, okay. customer behavior. So what what is Bellavix come here? How does it play in, in this mix? Yeah, so we're a turnkey option. So primarily work with brands. So generally, uh, we don't work with startups or too many launches. So by the time you get to a service like us, you're you're generating some sales and you're building brand equity. Um, so generally, we specialize in helping brands that are, you know, a little under half a million dollars a year on the platform. We'll help them scale to five, six, seven million dollars using using full funnel advertising and marketing tactics. Sure. Uh, because Amazon is its own ecosystem, there's unique levers organically and through advertising mm -hmm. that we have to push in terms of listing quality, search engine optimization. And then programmatic advertising and pay-per-click advertising. And there's some other nuances in there, but essentially it gives us the ability to touch customers at every phase of their journey. And what's really powerful when it comes to e-commerce is that Amazon's data is based on actual shopping behavior. Right. All the third-party data, all the first-party data, everything it collects is based on their shopping behavior, 200 mm -hmm. million. Give you some perspective, Walmart Plus is about 11 million. 
Walmart well, has a lot of catching up to do. Right. If you look at something like Google, it's search, it's search based. It's in, it's search based attempt. So mm-hmm. your engagement with your browser, how you search through there, is how ads and everything will populate. And on yeah. Facebook, it's social engagement. So mm-hmm. when you if you're selling products and you're looking for what's going to have the biggest bang for your buck, it's going to be the shopping data of customers actually in market or searching for your brand. And that's where the power comes in on the platform. Mm-hmm. And you can measure direct, right? Your impact on a business's sales. Like this oh, is not, and- it, it, I mean, I, I've had, I had a friend that worked at Amazon um, and I want to get into that as well, but like you, you know, your direct impact to the company and the sales, like from the moment that you guys get involved, you can see, you can see that <laughs> the direct ROI so, and not a lot of advertising, almost no advertising really is like that. Yeah. I mean, that's what's nice about being digital. Everything's trackable. And at this point, like Amazon's rolled out the Amazon attribution. So now we're able to track behavior off of Amazon. So if I gave you a link to share on your social media, on your website, I'll be able to track that behavior back to Amazon and know, okay. you know, did my off Amazon advertising effort on Google lead to sales? Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's a couple KPIs like ACOS advertising cost of sale is something that uh, is a typical KPI for what, is, what does that mean? Uh, advertising cost of sale, and that's your ad spend divided by your ad sales. And okay. you know we use that. That's, it's it's the yeah. inverse of ROAS essentially, but sure. that's the language Amazon uses. Um, and then for uh, slightly more sophisticated clients, so when you get to the point where we're talking full funnel and we're talking like mm-hmm. growth, uh, we start to look at tacos total advertising cost of sale. And like I mentioned earlier advertising sales influences total sales. Um, so what that means is that um, when we're measuring our ad sales and our ad spend, we're measuring against our uh, the halo effect of what we can do total sales. And as I mentioned before, you know, it's Amazon will uh, allow for um, sellers who advertise aggressively to get that organic placement. Thank you for that rundown. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a friend that, like I, I mentioned before, that worked worked at Amazon and he was an account executive there. So do, doesn't Amazon have these internal uh, uh, account executives that kind of help out or is that or what help me figure differentiate the, the, those two, like what you guys do and what somebody internally might do? Yeah. So, so first of all, the incentives for Amazon. So if you're working with an Amazon rep, it's probably through the programmatic platform, the DSP. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And it's great. You'll get access to a rep. The rep will help with competitor data. This is run through an agency or run directly through Amazon. If you run it through Amazon, I think the minimum buy-in is about 35K to get started. Uh, where if you go through an agency, they have their own seat on the platform. So there's okay. generally no minimum um, charge. There's also the SaaS program, S-A-S. And those are for larger brands. And you can essentially have a dedicated rep. Most of the larger companies, when we're talking like the Instapots of the world, these enterprise level clients, they'll have retail partners, they'll have special analytics, they'll have somebody on the advertising side, and they get this whole team, but they pay big dollars to to have that presence. So for the most part, how we as an agency engage reps, uh, if the brand has it, great, we'll work with those reps. Uh, And then what we normally do through programmatic advertising is we pull in reps uh, as as needed to help with that. And then we kind of work in conjunction together. Uh, Generally, most brands are not going to have access to reps. Back in the day, they had vendor reps who kind of helped facilitate um, helping brands kind of go in. And they've kind of phased that out uh, as they have a lot of sellers on on the platform. Um, So there's been a lot of changes around that. So for the most part, if you are getting access to a rep, you're paying for it. One way or another. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um, how did you get started with all this? And where did, where did your interest for e-commerce, where did this start? Yeah. So I've, I've always been uh, kind of entrepreneurial, but um, I have, a, I guess, a, a unique background. So um, prior to, uh, to doing um, advertising and marketing, I was actually, uh, I'm actually a licensed electrician. A lot of people don't know that. Amazing. And I got my license while I was in the U S Navy. So I got out and I uh, thought I was going to be an engineer. So I went to school full time while I worked uh, and discovered that uh, the engineering wasn't for me. And I, um, 
decided to go into business management, and then kind of rolled into entrepreneurship. So I had a really Dave Tomchak at Quinnipiac University. Uh, he was a strong influence on my life. I got out of the service and um, wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Uh, and he was like, hey, instead of being a management, you know, you're really going to get tied down into something very, uh, a lot of people have a general management degree. He's like, you should do entrepreneurship. It gives versatility in what you do. And then part of working through Dave, he had a lot of marketing programs that he ran. Uh, and I enjoyed that. And so while I was doing that, I started side hustling traditional SEO, Google pay per click, mm -hmm. uh, and kind of just learned uh, learned on other people's money as a lot sure. of us do uh, by faking it till you make it. But uh, what I did learn as I took on more clients is that there's um, you know how to do how to project manage, how to process things out, how to actually get good at your craft of advertising. Yep. Um, and I did that uh, till I graduated uh, in 2012. Uh, and then I left a comfortable six-figure job as a operations manager in the power industry um, to go make 12 bucks an hour to start up as a marketing manager. Uh, oh my gosh, I would, why? I would do it a hundred times. It was worth yeah. it. You follow your passions. You spend half your time at work and, and it wasn't for me. And um and so I, I took that job at the startup and I started, I was already freelancing PPC, but started doing it. Uh, your family at the time or what did you have going? What was your situation when yeah, you left? Yeah, I was your, married your with one kid. I was a little older when I started college because, uh, you know, I, mm, I did five course. years in the Navy. Of course, of course. Um, so I had had my kid. My first uh, child came while we were doing it. So um, 2013, I, mm. I joined Checkmate, which was my first digital agency. And then in 2017, my daughter was born okay. and I, I bounced from agency to agency. Yeah. When I learned about agency life, I love agency life. What like, was your role though, before you yeah. can tell, what was the, what oh, was yeah. that first role? Uh, the first role was a uh, marketing manager, but it was a sure. startup. So I did everything, hiring yep. processes, and we really focused on SEO and pay-per-click, uh, which was exciting. And then okay. from there, SEO was too slow for me. So I just dove deeper into pay-per-click. Nice. Um, as we got more clients, we started getting more e-commerce brands. Mm -hmm. uh, and then from there, just kind of started doing it uh, more often. And by then, I was no longer freelancing at all. And I was just full time in, in the work. Um, and then I got to my last job. And it was a great company or one of the last agencies uh, I worked for. And before I left them, I was managing about 50 accounts. And I had two helpers. And anybody, oh, wow. yeah, anybody who does. Uh, client services or account management understands that that's a lot of accounts. And yeah, 50, you said? 50, five, zero. It was oh intense. We were really busy. And um, what I found is like, just was drowning, um, didn't have a good work life balance. By that yeah. time, my, my second child was on his way. Um, and I was just having a lot of trouble. And I was like, you know what? There's got to be a better way than this. And I started freelancing again on the side because I wasn't really happy. Um, and I kind of just got to the point where um, enough of my former clients came out of the woodwork and they're like, hey, I hear you're freelancing. I hear you're considering doing your own thing uh, where I got to the point where I could just jump ship and kind of start doing my own thing. And that's exactly what happened in 2018. Um, left my my full time job and started mm -hmm. Bella Vix. And it was just uh, me, my co-founder and two VAs from overseas. And we built all our processes, the methodology, the program, and started coming out. I was really fortunate because um, my first probably dozen clients were all clients I formerly worked with. Of course. Um, so I was able to kind of get work right away. And then nice. from, from there, you know, four, four years later, we're into it. We're 15 full-time employees. Uh, we represent brands across the United States, uh, Europe, Canada, Mexico. Um, and we do all things Amazon and it's uh, super exciting. And what's interesting is like, I have slowly phased out of the advertising portion of the work and mm -hmm. that, and I now focus a lot on marketing and sales for the business. But what's even more interesting that SEO that I learned, the advertising that I learned is still applicable. I just apply it to Bella Vix as a business, which uh, is almost full circle. So went yeah. from in the business, working on other people's business to officially doing 
uh, doing my own thing. And now, now it's bigger than me. I like to say I'm, I'm like a turtle on a post. And it's always amazing because the turtle can't climb a post. How does it get to the top of the post? The team whips in there. So oh, I'm that. fortunate enough to just have a really great team um, that allows me to do, do what I do today. Amazing. So when you were hiring, so you said you have 15 people strong right now around yeah. there. Um, what do you look for when you're hiring these people? Like what are the different roles that, you know, what are different entry level roles or, or starting roles in this industry that you're looking for and what makes a good hire? Beautiful. So if anybody's interested in working in e-commerce and Amazon, definitely check out my website. We are always recruiting uh, for strategists. These are somebody who's going to be a little senior, but understands e-commerce and they'll work as more or less an account manager, uh, an account specialist. These are the people that go in and do the day-to-day work. Generally, somebody new to e-commerce or entering into this space will start off as a specialist. And what's that role consist of? Yep. There's two forms of specialists. There's an operations specialist and an advertising specialist. The operations specialist manages a lot. So listing compliance, um, attribute catalogs, um, compliance, um, promotions. um, There's a lot. But anything with operations, marketing, customer service, brand protection is all operations. Okay. And then advertising, because its own beast, is primarily focused on pay-per-click advertising Mm -hmm. and then programmatic advertising through DSP. Um, So those are the two um, positions and what it entails. Uh, um, I'm going to talk about the advertising side because this is an advertising podcast. Yeah. Generally, what it means is it's bid maintenance. It's functionally learning how the system works. It's getting certified through Amazon's platform. So I may have not mentioned it. We are a certified um, Amazon advertising partner. Uh, nice. We're one of the few businesses that have this accreditation, and then we're accredited directly through Amazon, which means Perfect. we fact that we practice, we follow all of Amazon's yeah. best practices. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's not easy to get. So we're really I'm proud sure. that we've been able to be listed in this program. So working with us, you would run through the, the better together methodology and basic pay-per-click and some of the uh, our strategy around full funnel marketing and advertising. Like this mm-hmm. is all you'll learn and you get hands-on. Yeah. You know, after about 30 days of, of training, you're in the account doing routine bid maintenance, uh, keyword harvesting, competitor research. This stuff and, so and, important. No, I'm sorry, uh, keep I mean, going. Yeah. Hands down. I mean, it's it, what makes or bakes the brand. Like, why does mm. somebody come to an agency? They're stagnant. They they don't they're they hit a wall and they don't know what to do. You're you're actually Googling mm-hmm. Amazon management company. You're, you're searching for somebody to have these solutions. So it's important that we have these solutions. And you know right. what makes a good solution? It's process and it's consistency. Mm-hmm. It's doing the same things consistently over and over, day in and day out. And we have scaled. I mean, if you look at our website, we have scaled several businesses to you know mm-hmm. 10x what they were doing when they started with us. And a lot of it's just that fundamental, the consistency, following yeah. best practices, and also understanding how the different levers you can pull depending on what the brand's goals are. Yeah. So what what what's like a like just like a pretty standard case study? Like this this company, X company is coming over because they need more sales, right? Like what what give me a case study example that you you guys are proud of. It doesn't have to be like your number one. I don't even want to hear your number one. I just want to hear a standard case study of why somebody would come to your company. Yeah. So I'll give you a, a, a case study. We were working with a, a sports equipment manufacturer and this lady is the best. Uh, we mm-hmm. love her. Uh, um, and what happened was she, she came cause she was working with another agency and they, she wasn't getting the results she wanted, which is not unusual. There's sure. all types of agencies out there. Yeah. Um, so she came to work with us and you know, the mistake a lot of these brands make when it comes to uh, advertising, you know, she had a high ACOS, her total sales were stagnant. She was stuck at that half a million mark um, and she wasn't sure what to do. And she's, you know, she's a, she's a good marketer. She was working with TikTok influencers. She's doing mm. Facebook and social ads. She's doing Google search. So yeah. she's really but she wanted to sell on- more. But she wanted to sell more. And who does it? You know, and Amazon has its own expenses. 30% of your retail price is going to be in fees. Um, So, you know, it's an expensive platform. Yeah. Um, And so a lot of times when we start working with these agencies uh, or these companies, what we find the previous agency does is they focus on that bottom third of the funnel. It's like brand searches and basic product searches. They don't go long tail. But more importantly, they don't understand the full funnel. And just to give like 
real quick to kind of summarize it, what because she was focused on the bottom of the funnel, she wasn't seeding the top of the funnel. So she was always stagnant to what market demand was and what Amazon thought she'd sell best. So Mm -hmm. all we did is we just lift the cap. We we started putting it in the top. We implemented full funnel advertising strategies. And it was the implementation uh, for her of programmatic advertising. And so what programmatic advertising allows us to do on Amazon, it allows us to target customers on and off the platform. If you went to my Amazon product detail page but didn't make a purchase, I can show ads to you on your mobile device, on websites, on Amazon-owned and operated properties, and on third-party suppliers. So it gives me the ability, you know, Ogilvy's theory of advertising. Like you have to see something 20, mm-hmm. 25 times before you know you're going to make a purchase. That tool itself is single-handedly responsible for how we scale a lot of the brands we work with because we understand fundamentally how to market to somebody from top of the funnel to the bottom of the funnel. And gotcha. then it's all about efficiency. What are you willing to spend mm-hmm. to acquire a customer? And that was the question for her. She was really stringent on her ACOs targets. Uh, we convinced her to move her KPIs to tacos, and she gave us a 20% tacos. When we uh, did our baseline work, meaning, okay, what does it cost to acquire a customer at the bottom third of the funnel, branded searches and product searches, mm-hmm. cost me 10% total advertising cost of sale. So I had 10% to work with to work up the funnel and slowly mm-hmm. but surely in market, contextual targeting, we just worked our way up. Now we're full funnel marketed. We're nice. full funnel advertising for this brand. This brand is probably uh, one of our best case studies. Sure. Um, they went from half a million dollars um, to almost a ten to twelve million dollar business. Wow. Uh, April was our best month. We did nine hundred thousand dollars in sales. We're striving nice. to break the million. What's um, the company? Um, the company is H two O Capsules. You can definitely okay. check them out online. Yeah, um, why not? They sell water bottles, and sure. um, you know the. Owner, why not give them? A, why not give them a shout out? Yeah, yep. You could definitely give them the shout out, and uh, For sure. Yeah, and she does. It's it's a really high quality product. She has a patent on the product, mm-hmm. and it's a really fun brand to work with. When as an advertiser, when you can explain to somebody that full funnel and have them understand the KPIs, and then they say, okay, you know, if you could stay within this efficiency standard, the twenty mm-hmm. percent tacos, you could spend as much money as you want. The world's your oyster. You can grow these brands. You can experiment with different audiences, pay-per-click on and off the platform, and you can get really granular on how you attract customers and how you get them to engage it and re-engage your products. Um, so it's, yeah. it's just a really fun, it's a really yeah. fun career, a really fun platform. And, th- and that's an example of companies we work with. Interesting. You know, I, I, I they're very strategic, almost like, like, uh, like you got a game plan uh, and I'm thinking now oh. is, is, was the, the Navy, you said Navy, correct? Yes. Yeah. Is it, is it, what does that background have to, is, how has that led to success in this, in this industry? I'm, Cause I'm curious. Process, process, process. If any yeah. of you guys ever read uh Gina Wickman's book, Traction or Michael McCallowitz clockwork, it's all about processing, but they, <laughs> the military, you know, the joke mm-hmm. is they have to make everything stupid proof because you know, people. You come in at 18, you're going to make tons of mistakes. Um, so what it means is lots of standardized operating yeah. procedures. So mm-hmm. since I was pretty much 18, we mm-hmm. were writing these things and doing it for manufacturing. And it was so it was so surreal when I got into marketing and they're like, uh, you know, good companies have SOPs. And I'm like, of course, why wouldn't they have SOPs? Mm-hmm. And the big thing is, you know, it's consistency, consistency in your process, consistency in your delivery consistency in your customer experience. So, you know, biggest takeaway, the biggest difference is processing. When you find something that works, process it and then hire somebody who could do it for you and then move on to the next thing. That's how you, that's how you scale your business. I love that. Um, Other things that you look for when you're hiring people, what, what, what should they demonstrate? Uh, What do you, what, what skills or, or attitudes are you looking for? Yeah. Proactiveness somebody who's solutions driven, um, somebody who's detail oriented, um, somebody who's uh, conversational. You can be introverted or extroverted and still be able to deliver really well on client calls. Um, I think those are the strongest things and the willing to learn. You know, to this day, I'm still learning. 
Uh, mm-hmm. Every day they're changing things. Every day I'm pushing myself to be better. Um, and those are characteristics we look for. And, you know, we're, we're not an easy agency to work for. Um, we world-class people live in world-class service is kind of our thing. Um, and we don't hire everybody and we fire people mm-hmm. pretty quickly to be perfectly transparent. And it's a sink or swim. You know, we will give you the infrastructure. We'll support you along the way, but you know, you have to have a good attitude. You have to persevere. You have to put the hours in, you know, I, mm-hmm. you know, I work regular hours for the most part now, but my first five years in advertising, you know, startups too, we're talking 12, yeah. 15 hour days, just grinding and hustling. But yeah. I learned my craft. And because I put all that time in now, uh, I'm able to put, I'm, I'm, a, I'm able to have a better work-life balance. Yeah. Super important. And when you're just coming out of college, when else can you work this hard? Like, yeah. I'm not, I'm, you know, like I'm not, a su- I'm not a big advocate into, you know, you know, 70, 60, 70 hour weeks, of course. But I think like when you don't have a, you know, a significant other, or you're not married or you don't have kids. Now's the time to, you know, explore what you can do, but, you yeah. know, and, and then draw back when you need to. Yeah. And I, you know, Gary V puts it out or not. And, you know, now that I'm older and I run the AC, we work really hard to make sure people mm. work, have a good work-life balance. So of I'm not promoting, you know, killing yourself, but no, you know, sometimes you do have to put the extra time in and it of pays course. off as all I'm getting at. I agree. I think that's a healthy way to look at it. Some people might disagree. Some people might agree, you know, but that's the way you run your company. And yeah. I, I respect that for sure. I, I mean, I'm always here. I'm, 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 I, I subscribe to that mentality as well. Yeah. Yeah. We're meeting cool. here at 6 15 Eastern Standard Time. So I know you're putting in the hours. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, anything else that you want to talk about? Uh, I, I think we covered a lot here, Will. And I learned a lot uh, you know, about Belovix. Anything else that we didn't cover that you maybe thought about today that you really want to get out to get out there to the people? Um, the only thing I could think of is. Um, you know, advice on on marketing and advertising. It's mm. it's a really rewarding and fun career. Um, what I really like about it, and I hope your your viewers and subscribers think the same. It's it's a perfect um, mesh between like psychology, human behavior, sociology, and like mm. commerce and business. And you know, I I really enjoy the process. I really enjoy diving into these brands. Um, and it is so much fun and such a rewarding experience. So anybody who's interested in advertising and marketing, I highly recommend you work in an agency. It doesn't have to be Bellavix. Find mm-hmm. something you really love and go work for them as an intern and then try to get on, on the ground floor. Um, it'll be really rewarding. You'll get a lot of experience really quick. I think yeah. why I was able to jump ship and kind of do my own things because I was able to work with so many different types of businesses and have that versatility. Mm -hmm. Um, And it made me comfortable too, to run my own business. So just feedback if anybody's interested in it. And of course you could always reach out to me. uh, Yeah. How can, how can they find you? Yeah. LinkedIn. I'm I'm pretty, uh, pretty active on LinkedIn. And of course our website, you can check us out. And then my personal email address, which you can more than welcome to put in the show notes. It's well, at bellavix.com. Um, I'm somebody who's changed careers a few times and I've taken the the leap and I'm happy to share my experiences with anybody who's considering it because um, it's definitely worth it. Perfect. Well, this has been super helpful. We'll put all of those resources that you recommended as well at, at our Instagram at breaking and entering pod. So, well, that's all I got. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Juno. Of course. Thank you so much for listening to the entire episode of the Breaking and Entering Advertising Podcast. If you like what you heard, it would mean a lot to us and help us grow if you can just leave us five stars on Apple Podcasts. And if you have time to leave a small review, that's great too, but really that five stars will help us a lot. And be sure to connect with our guests. We want to help you break in. The way to do that is by going to our Instagram at Breaking and Entering Pod. All one word at breaking and entering pod on Instagram. There we have links to their portfolios and their LinkedIn and their secret resources, and they want to connect. So go do that. And some thank yous. Thank you to our creative and production team, Buchan Jung, Juan Camargo, and Mikey Malarkey, and our PR team led by Nicole Tolochko and the AAF group from the University of Illinois. Thank you all so much, and we will see you next week with another 
amazing guest. Thank you for tuning in to Breaking and Entering. We want to be transparent with our valued listeners, so we'd like to disclose that this episode was made possible through a paid collaboration. The funds from this collaboration were used to produce this episode and contribute to the growth and enhancement of our show. At Breaking and Entering, we are committed to delivering high-quality content that informs, entertains, and engages our audience. We carefully select our partners to ensure that any sponsored or paid content aligns with the values and interests of our listeners. Rest assured that while this episode is a result of a paid collaboration, our opinions and creative control over the content remain independent and, of course, authentic. We prioritize providing valuable insights and experiences to our audience regardless of any paid partnerships. And we greatly appreciate the support of our sponsors and partners as they play a vital role in helping us bring content to your ears. If you have any questions about our partnerships or this disclosure, please do not hesitate to reach out to us at Gino, G-E-N-O, at breakenterpod.com. Thank you.